Hello and welcome to Office Hours with Bill Jennings from Klamath Community College Distance Learning. We are on video four of five on talking about solving quadratic equations. <clears throat> now what I want to talk about in this video is the completing the square method. Now completing the square method is really just an extension of the square root method. We're going to take an equation and identify it as easily manipulatable. Well, it's everything's m we can manipulate to it, but some things more easily than others. We're going to manipulate a given equation to make it a perfect case for that square root method. If you remember in the last video, those square root methods were just kind of like standing out there. One of them was already factored. One of them was a perfect square just standing on that side. Now we're going to learn how to manipulate things to make it be that way uh, so we can, we can solve really pretty much anything. In the first video, we talked about factoring. Well, factoring only worked if it was factorable. The square root method, as we know so far, only works if I've got a, s a perfect square staring me in the face. But the completing the square method, we're just going to make everything be a perfect square through some algebra techniques. Let's consider the equation x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. In this case, it is not factorable. x plus 4x, x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. There's nothing I can do to be able to factor that. I don't have this easy form set up that makes it set up to be this perfect square format. So I'm going to have to be able to do something to it to manipulate it. That comes through what's called completing the square. Now the words completing the square means we're going to try and find a value that's going to make something factor to be a perfect square trinomial. Now perfect square trinomials look like this where we have x squared plus 6x minus 9. That factors into this perfect square trinomial of x plus 3 as a quantity squared. Uh, notice that you've got 3, it, and remember when you expand these out, sometimes it doesn't hurt for us to write it out one time to remember how this actually comes about. Clean that up a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't hurt for us to write this out just a little bit, and we end up with this x plus 3, x plus 3, and when you would multiply that out, you would end up with that 6x in the middle. Remember where that comes from. Now over here, I have x squared minus 20x plus 100. Notice this 100 turns into a 10. Also, something to note here is that negative sign, because I needed to get a negative inside the middle. So that's a perfect square trinomial again. Now one that might be a little bit harder to recognize might be something like this. But again, if I look at that 81 fourths, notice that 81 fourths is a perfect square because it's 9 halves that times itself twice, uh, and so that's where this is going to come together here. Now the other thing to maybe note is that 9 halves plus 9 halves is going to get, actually in this case, minus 9 halves plus a minus 9 halves is going to give me a negative 18 halves, which negative 18 halves turns into that negative 9. So what's the pattern? The pattern is, is that I'm going to take the coefficient with the x to the first power, and then I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. Let's look at what we have going on here. If you take this 6, and I said, let's take 6 and divide it by 2 and square it, I would get 3 squared, which is 9. That's a perfect target for that number that would be there. And notice that the 3 is actually what landed there. Let's look one more time at this negative 20. Let's take a negative 20, and let's divide by 2, negative 20 divided by 2, and then we're going to square it. Negative 20 divided by 2 is a negative 10, and then we square it, we'll end up with 100. Notice the 100 sits right here, and the negative 10 ends up becoming right there, because a negative 10 times a negative 10 gives us that positive 100. How about the negative 9? It's a little bit more dicey hanging out here. A negative 9 divided by 2, and we square it. Negative 9 halves squared gives me 81 fourths. That's my 81 fourths. And the 9 halves, yep, there he was right there all along. So we can complete the square easily uh, by taking that, the coefficient that goes with the x and uh, dividing by 2 and squaring. So that's our, that's our piece there. So what is our strategy? We want to manipulate through algebra techniques to create a perfect square trinomial on one side of the equation with only constants, numbers, no, no variables, on the other side of the equation. Then 
I'm going to choose the number that creates the perfect square, and then I'll be able to just then, it's just a reverse then of going back to the square root method, because once I've created that perfect square, it really is its own, own uh, it goes back to reverse the other problem. I think we, we call this, I think, a wrong name. We call it the completing the square technique, and really it's a uh, find a perfect square, then use the square root method is really what we're after. It's kind of a one step away from square root method. So what I'd like to think of it is right here, I've got, uh, let's look at an example, really this kind of helps us walk into this problem. x squared minus 6x equals 12. There's no number there, but is there a number that potentially would be very kind to me? Let's get this out of the way and look at what we had up here. We had an example already set up. If I had x squared plus 6x plus 9, that would be something that factors immediately into a perfect square. So there's a number that I wish was here. And that number that I wish was there, I wish there was a nine there. If that said plus nine, then I would be able to just say, hey, it's a perfect square. It's x minus three squared was slightly different than this example because I got the minus sign going on, but the same idea that if I, could, if I had a plus nine there, I wish there was a plus nine there because if there was a nine and plus nine, I'd be able to factor it immediately to this. Now, I can't just pull a nine. I can kind of pull a nine out of the sky as long as I add nine to the other side. Is it legal for me to put a nine there as a plus nine if I just simply add nine to the other side? So I end up with this being equal to 21. So let's re review what just happened there. I said to myself, well, if I could complete the square, x squared minus 6x, the perfect number to live right here would be a 9. And I can do that as long as I add 9 to the other side also. The whole point of completing the square was so that I would have a perfect square trinomial so that I could say, hey, you, you, you factor to be perfectly squared, and this is going to be 21 on the other side. What we just finished learning was the square root property and the, or the square root method. Square root method says, hey, if you have something squared, just take the square root of both sides and don't forget to plus, put a plus or minus over on the other side of the equation. So I end up with x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 21, which cannot be reduced. So I just solve for the x and I say x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 21, and I have my two answers, and it was as simple as just adding 9 to both sides. Let's go back to our opening example where I had x squared plus 4x minus 7. Well, that minus 7, I kind of wish was a different number. So let's just move him out of the way so that I can see what I really have. So moving him out of the way means adding 7 to both sides. So I just, if I add 7 to both sides, I'll just get that negative 7 over on the other side. And I've left myself a hole to work with here. So I have x squared plus 4x plus a wish equals 7. What do you wish was right there that would make a perfect square? Well, let's go back to our techniques. This is a 4. That's my, my coefficient in front of the x. 4 divided by 2, okay? 4 divided by 2, and then we're going to square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. I wish there was a 4 there, and it will factor very well. I can only wish there was a 4 there as long as I'm willing to wish just as hard for the other side. This turns into x plus 2 as a quantity squared equals 11, and... Now I have the square root method ready to roll one more time. We'll take the square root of this side, square root of the other side. Don't forget your plus and minus sign. So now I have x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. One more time, uh, simply just moving that 2 across, I'll say x equals a negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. And I pulled that last little step off by just simply subtracting 2 from both sides. So we have that coming together. Now. Square root, uh, this uh, completing the square was kind of nice 
and everything I've chosen so far has been very kind to me because on the front end, I actually had something that would have factored very easily into being a perfect square because that front term was both just x squared. So I know that x times x is going to give me an x squared. It's going to factor very clean. But if I take this right here and I say, okay, let's keep this same strategy rolling and go with this 5x and let's get the 3 out of the way. And let's move him over to the other side. If I start talking about my wish going on here, I'm going to be in trouble because on my next step, I have to factor to a perfect square and this 2 is going to get in my way big time because I'm not going to be able to make it factor cleanly. So before I pull that off, I'm going to have to get rid of that 2 and I can get rid of that 2 simply by dividing it out so I can make that 2 go away. So if I divide this by 2, then I'd have to divide this by 2, and I have to divide this by 2, and I've got fractions galore. But that's okay. We can work with them. The key thing is that x squared on the front just now is just sitting right there. I've got x squared plus 5 have x. I'm just going to go ahead and leave a blank there because I'm going to make my wish in just a minute. Equals 3 halves. Now, let's focus right here on this five halves. Let's take that five halves off to the side and see what we can see what we can pull off here in just a quick moment of, of digesting that five halves. We said take that number and divide by two. So over right here we took the four and we divided by two. Down here we could have looked at it and said take the six, divide by two, and you'd have got three and then you squared it. Take the four, divide by two, you get two and squared. Take five halves and divide by 2. Well, how do you take a fraction and divide by 2? When you have a fraction and you divide, what we really mean is we want to multiply by 1 half. Multiply by 1 half is the exact same thing as dividing by 2. And then when I'm done with that process, I'm going to square it. So what I end up with is 5 fourths squared, which will be 25 sixteenths. So I wish I had a 25 sixteenths live in here. Seems like a weird number, but things are going to work out very well for us. Now, if I add a 25 sixteenths there, I'm going to have to add a 25 sixteenths to the other side also. It looks like a hornet's nest right here. Don't worry about it. We chose these numbers on purpose so it would factor very clean and very fast. Factoring this, we chose 25 sixteenths. It was completing the square. It should factor to be a perfect square. And the answer to what it would factor to be is right here in our busy work that we did just a second ago. It's going to be x plus 5 fourths squared equals the result of 3 halves plus 25 sixteenths. Well, 3 halves is going to be um, A 24, so I'm going to end up with 49 sixteenths when I add those two things together. Let me give myself just a little bit more room here, and we can bring her on down in the line here so we can see what we've got going on. Okay, here's what we have. It's got fractions all over it, but right now I have it in that beautiful form of something squared equals a number. It's time to square root. If I square root this side, it's legal as long as I square root and put a plus or minus on the other side. Square rooting this is going to result in x plus 5 fourths. Again, remember, why did I square root? Just get rid of that square. It's the result of whatever's living inside that parenthesis set. What's the square root of 49 sixteenths? I believe that is 7 fourths. Now, it's not just 7 fourths. Let's not forget about that plus or minus. It's going to be plus or minus. Now, I've got two answers coming my way. So the two answers coming my way are going to be just as this. I'm going to say this is x equals a negative 5 fourths plus or minus 7 fourths. I should, because this is not, does not have radicals in it, I should do all my math and let it come together. So negative 5 plus 7, one of my answers is going to be a negative 2 fourths, which is a negative 1 half. And then the other answer is going to come out to be a negative 5, mi negative 12 fourths. And that negative 12 fourths will come out to be a negative 3. So I end up with 
two answers, maybe they're in reverse order here, but negative one half and negative three. One thing to note here, I ended up with an answer that didn't have any radicals in it. If I would have been a little bit more aggressive right from the beginning, maybe I could have factored this and I could have got to the answer much quicker. It's kind of a right tool for each job. We kind of forced this one through this concept of completing the square. In reali reality, we could have actually looked to factor it and we could have maybe finished the problem a lot easier. Now, completing the square works really good on problems of this nature, really quick, f fast solutions for quadratic equations. You get something like this, you're going to find that you're going to try and factor it and probably end up using the quadratic formula, which is coming up in the next video. Yet, the strategy or the ability to be able to complete the square becomes very, very powerful for us in our algebraic manipulations for future uh, use. So it's not uh, a bad exercise to go through problems of this nature so we can actually watch it happen. We're really going to use completing the square for other techniques later on in the course, uh, but for now it was a good exercise of learning, learning how to make those things come together. We'll see you in the next video.